Hi everyone, Lewis told me that you like the technical videos and I know that you're a fan of the RGB LEDs already so I thought I'd make this little video to show you about the LEDs that we're using in the product. As you know we've got um, a lot of LEDs, one for each key, but then also we've got some on the back and this backboard here to make the underglow lighting that we're using. And that's about 140 LEDs in total. The ones we first started looking at are called WS2812s, but the problem with them is they're quite expensive and quite powerful. Our first quote, which was for 10,000 of them, were about 20 cents each. So that means if we are using 140 in a keyboard, we'll be spending $25 just on LEDs. Plus, they each draw about 60 milliamps, so if you put them all together, it makes about 8 amps. And the maximum we're allowed to draw from USB is like half an amp. So they'll be way too powerful, they're way too expensive. So what we're going to do, we're going to use individual RGB LEDs, draw much less current, and they're more like four or five cents um, for each one. But then we have to um, control them with a special controller, which gets very complicated. But luckily we're using this um, controller by Sonics um, that can take a matrix of LEDs like this and then control them all for us. So I've got that on a little breakout board down here. One of the problems you can see though is that well, this line is what I'm wanting to turn on, but these are the ones here, these ones that are showing red, they're on, but actually we don't want them to be on, they're just on anyway. So why is that happening? Well, one of the reasons is that the forward voltage of each LED is different. So the red ones turn on about 2 volts, but the blue and green turn, off, turn on about 3 volts. And with this complicated wiring here, that if you want to turn on the red one, this line here has got to go high, this one here has got to go low. But because this line here is high, these ones will also be trying to be on. So the driver has to keep these two lines high as well. But depending on how high the voltage is, depends on whether the LED is off or maybe it's on a little bit. So what I did was I wired up um, these four little wires here and I've connected them to the scope so you can see over here on the scope the four different voltages. So this is what it's looking like. When This is the common anode, so when this one's going high it's trying to switch on an LED, maybe not the one it's connected to but another one. But because it's trying to keep this one off it has to make a positive voltage on the red, the green and the blue lines. So if we zoom in a bit further and I increase these, the blue one, the red one, and line them on top of each other. <coughs> the difference here that I'm measuring with the cursors is at the moment about 1.8 volts, which is just enough to turn the LED on. So how do we fix that? Well, the Sonics um, Datasheet is really good and they've got um, a cool feature called VAF which stands for, um, for anti-forward voltaging um, and we've got a big register here and for each LED we can set an offset so we can set whether it should the forward voltage should be slightly higher or slightly lower so we can set the forward voltage for the LEDs to be different from the for the red ones than it is for the green and blue ones so if I um, flash the new firmware with the anti-forward voltage. You take a look down here now. This one that was on, we had a few on before, this one's off now. And if we come back to the scope, you can see that the, the line for the red has increased. So the difference between them, which is the important part, if I just uh, do that there, now it's 1.48 volts, which is not enough to turn on the red LED because the red LED needs more like about 1.8 to 2 volts to turn on. So the good news is that by working out where all the, the red LEDs in our matrix, which we know from the circuit diagram, we can program the forward voltage register and make sure that all the LEDs stay off that are meant to be off. So um, I think that's the last thing I wanted to say. Um, see you next time. Thanks for watching.